Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel and welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, uh, where I, Mark, a former dive instructor, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions from my years of experience in the diving industry. So if you do have any questions, then pop them down in the comments section and use this hashtag in your comment and I'll get to them as soon as possible. And whilst you're in the comment section, if you do see a question that I've missed, uh, then start up a conversation. Uh, this week I'm answering a question from Thomas Martin about cold water regulators. So Thomas Martin 390 says, hello, I have a question. I will soon acquire the MTXRC. However, I rarely dive in cold water, but rather in warm water. Is it just as efficient in hot water? Thanks for your reply. It's a fairly common question whether cold water regulators work in warm waters and the short answer is yes. Uh, cold water regulators will work perfectly fine in warm waters. The only reason we have cold water regulators is that when all of that gas that we're breathing is rushing through the valve and it goes from a high pressure to a low pressure, that valve gets cold. If you surround that cold valve with cold water, you'll start to get ice before long and it'll ice up in an open position. Warm waters are easy for regulators. The metal absorbs the heat from the surrounding water and it prevents it from freezing. So a cold water regulator will work perfectly fine in both cold and warm waters, arguably working a little bit better in warm waters, but a warm water regulator will only work in warmer waters. You'll see it's on very few regulator designs, usually smaller, lighter travel regulators because they have less metal work to absorb that heat. They typically have a, you'll see like EN250 and then over 10 degrees C kind of stamped or laser etched into it somewhere. And that denotes a warm water regulator that you can only really use in what they say is warm waters, which is over 10 degrees. Uh, I'd argue that 10 or 11 degrees Celsius is quite cold water, um, but still the, the industry denotes 10 degrees and below as cold water. But yeah, something like an Apex MTX RC regulator is gonna work perfectly fine in warm waters. Uh, it's designed to work in the, the original MTX, the military regulator was designed for like the grunts to work in like really cold, cold temperatures and a real bulletproof, well not literally bulletproof, but a tough regulator um, that just worked. Uh, they brought out the MTX R, which is the recreational version, uh, but some divers found it was quite stiff to breathe from. That was one of the um, the requirements of the, uh, the 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 military version and the, the cold water rating. By making that valve harder to open, it meant that it was less likely to free flow and less likely to ice up. Uh, but diving it recreationally, especially in warmer waters, divers found that it was just a bit too hard to, uh, to breathe from. So Apex released the MTX RC, which has the adjustable breathing knob on the side. So then it makes it a little bit easier to breathe from. Um, but yeah, there, there's warm water is easy for regulators. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, all regulators will work in warm water, but only cold water regulators will work in cold waters. Um, and you can usually identify cold water uh, regs by uh, a few little features that you'll see on them. The first one, the most, the most important one is a, um, a cold water rating, something like EN250A, and the, uh, the manual will be, be quite stringent about that and tell you what temperatures you can take your regulator to. Um, but look for like heat sink fins, uh, so lots of little bands usually around the valves. So as the gas enters the second stage, you'll see that kind of ribbing uh, designed to just, they act as a heat sink so that any warmth from the surrounding water can be absorbed and uh, and prevent it from icing up. And uh, NTX RC is, is the perfect example of like this cold water design. 
on the first stage. Um, it, it just maximizes the surface area to volume ratio. And um, on the on the, around the first stage, around the um, the restricted parts, and um, yeah, they go through a lot of like R and D to make sure that it's it's the best thermal performance to prevent ice from forming up. You've got that rubberized um, over molding, which helps to prevent ice from forming over the top of the. Um, uh, the first stage so it doesn't ice up there uh, they went through a lot of work but yeah warm water is going to be easy for the uh, the regulator it's uh, yeah it's, it's easy mode for them yeah it is a fairly common question and it kind of makes sense uh if you're if you're new to scuba diving and you see regulators denoted as cold water regulators oh so i can only use them in cold water actually no the the proper terminology should be cold and warm water regulators um but yeah, yeah it's, it, it does kind of make sense why some people don't think that it would work in warm waters. Uh, but yeah, the, it's all to prevent icing because whenever anything, if you imagine like an aerosol can, uh, if you've got your deodorant or something, if you spray that a lot, the can or the, the contents of the can are going from high pressure to low pressure. And uh, is it Gay-Lussac's law uh, or Charles's law? Um, where if something goes from high pressure to low pressure, the temperature reduces. So that, that can physically gets cold. And uh, the opposite happens when you fill something up. If you're filling cylinders, you'll feel that the cylinder itself starts to get warm because you're going from low pressure to high pressure. And uh, the same thing happens around our regulators. You're going from a high pressure state to a low pressure state. So that reduces the temperature. And if you reduce the temperature of something that's surrounded by water and moisture, it's going to form ice. And when that happens around valves, it can literally hold them in open position and then you just get a free flow. That's why in a lot of regulator manuals, if you have a look at uh, diving in colder waters, they recommend having two first stages, either by diving twin cylinders or like a Y valve, which has two outlets on a single cylinder. And you have one first stage per second stage, because if you're diving in colder waters, and your, your buddies run out of gas or whatever it is, they're breathing from your single first stage. You've got two, breathe, two people breathing from a single first stage. That's a lot of gas flow going through and they're not gonna be just casually breathing on a chilled out dive. They've just run out of gas. They're gonna be huffing and puffing. So there's gonna be a lot of airflow going through that. That increases the chances of it freezing at the worst possible time. So yeah, a lot of, um, I think it's uh, like EU standards where you, if you're diving in colder waters, uh, the exact temperature will depend on the, uh, the manufacturer, but they, they say have two individual first stages, one for each second stage. So that in and out of air situation, you um, uh, you don't put too much strain on a single first stage. But in warmer waters, it's fine because it, it, yeah, the surrounding water is nice and warm. It's far less likely to um, to ice up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always a consideration in, in colder waters. But yeah, warm water is just easy mode for, for regulators. Any other questions? Uh, by all means, pop them down in the comment section underneath this video. Uh, remember to use that Ask Mark hashtag to get it featured in an up and coming video. And of course, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Um, subscribe to the magazine there if you want a magazine subscription. We're available all around the world. And if you want a free subscription, you can subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving.